In this video tutorial, I'm going to look at some of uh, the functions of the original Vernier LabQuest uh, device. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the equipment up to collect some data of a falling object. And we're going to look and see how we can analyze uh, that data. So we can see over here I've got the uh, Vernier motion detector set up with a box of tissues ready to fall. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the tissues underneath the motion detector when I'm ready and I'm just going to let it fall. So this is the first screen that I see when I plug in the motion detector. It's the, the screen which you might call meter. Uh, it's, uh, this is the meter button here. I can always go back to this screen by clicking on, on this uh, button here. Uh, at the moment it's telling me the distance from the sensor to the ground is about 90 centimeters. I need to adjust how the, uh, how the sensor is going to collect the data. If I click on sensors here, data collection, then I can make those changes. Uh, I know that the motion detector can select or collect rather up to about 30 samples per second. So I'm going to put in 30 there. Um, and I know it's not going to take five seconds to fall to the ground. So I'm going to put in one second there. This one here is just the uh, interval between samples. I don't need to change that. That changes when I change the rate, 30 samples per second. So this window on the right tells me that it's going to collect 30 samples per second for one second. So I'm ready to go. Uh, when I'm ready, I can press this virtual button or the real button down here and it will collect for me. So here we go, ready to go. I'm going to put the box underneath the motion detector and it, the distance goes down a lot, about 19 centimeters. And I'm going to press collect. And there we go. So once we've pressed collect and the object's fallen, we've got two uh, graphs shown, uh, position against time and velocity against time. Looking at the position time graph, you can see it's an upward curve showing that the speed is increasing. The slope of this graph is the, the speed of the object. Uh, the second graph here, velocity against time, we can see that the velocity is about straight line during the fall, which shows that the, the acceleration is pretty constant because the slope of the velocity time graph is the acceleration. So I'm going to just show one graph. I don't really want to see two graphs at once. So if I click on graph, show graph, I can select one graph. It's not the right one. I want velocity time. So I can click where it says position, click on velocity, and that's the graph I actually want to see, the velocity time graph. So there are a couple of things I can do with this graph here. The first thing I can do is I can actually just click on the graph and a little circle will appear in a couple of lines and it will tell me the coordinates of that data point. It'll tell me the velocity at this point here, the impact velocity if you like, is about 3.5 meters per second. It actually tells me the time as well. This is the time since the data logger was clicked to collect data. It wasn't the time that it was actually falling for. If I did want to find out how long it was falling for from this point here to this point here, what I'd need to do is I'd need to analyze the graph further. Click on Analyze, Delta. Delta means change. And if I click on Delta and select Graph 1, I get a new window here. And to find the change in time or velocity between any points, all I need to do is go to the first point about here, click and drag up to the final point here. And what I've done is I've dragged through from this time to this time and from this velocity to this velocity. And now it's telling me down here that delta x, that's the change in the x-axis, which is time, is about 0.46 seconds. And the change in velocity from about zero up to the final value, 3.37 or so. So it's allowing me to find the, the change in any X or Y values. Okay, 
The slope of this graph is the acceleration of the object. It's the rate at which the velocity is changing with time. So I can actually find the acceleration simply by clicking and dragging through the section where the object is accelerating and I can put a linear trend line on that. So I've clicked and dragged to select the area. I need to go to Analyze, a curve fit, it's going to be a straight line not a curve, curve fit, it's the velocity graph and I have to choose the linear fit, it's a straight line, linear fit. There we go and it's telling me that the slope is 7.85 meters per second squared, which is a little less than the acceleration of gravity 9.81, but we can explain this because air resistance is, is reducing the acceleration. Another quantity which we can determine from this graph is actually how far the object has fallen. Average velocity multiplied by time is the distance uh, an object has moved and that quantity is actually the area under this graph. It's the area enclosed by the, uh, the graph itself and the x-axis. So I can again select the area I'm interested in, which is now the whole, almost the whole graph, and I can measure the area under that graph. In mathematical terms we call that the integral and we can see that if I go to analyze integral it'll fill in that area under the graph there. Looking over here the integral is 1.1 meters so the object fell about 1.1 meters from my hand to the ground. So on this screen we can see a summary of our analysis here. We can see that the area under the graph or the distance the object fell is given here and we can also see that the acceleration of the object as it was falling uh, is given here 7.8 meters per second squared. It is possible to save and export this data and analyze it in Logger Pro but I'll cover that in another video.